Today, underneath many parts of the Sahara, in areas like this, there are enormous reservoirs of oil and gas. The rock itself was littered with fossilized life. It's estimated that these fossils were living in a period 350 million years ago. chances have you got of fixing it and driving on? Well, I think very good, but the thing might just go again every 10 kilometres, we don't know. If we get, we were stuck in there last night. Yes. And I think back in the United States. the most priests in order to convert the Tuareg of these mountains to Christianity. He never converted a single one. go about their job without any emotion one way or the other. Their main job is as pack animals. The last of the salt caravans, traveling from Bilma to Agadez, employs about 500 camels for the crossing of the Tenere Sand Sea. Whether on camel or in cars, we have to continue on our way. of produce in this small African market as you'll ever find in a Western supermarket. <laughs> in 1805, Mungo Park, the young British explorer, was the first to reach the Niger River. Kai was the first to describe to an eager world what Timbuktu was really like. The scene at this port is not so very different from what Kai saw when he landed 150 years ago. And to all those who would pay tribute to the men who first explored and crossed it, Rene Kai and Gordon Lang. Yet to all lovers of the Sahara, a journey such as this is in the nature of a pilgrimage. A journey, journey along the lonely road to Timbuktu. <laughs> 